Okay. Uh, my name is Mike Wendell, uh, the administrator of the Bishop Hill Heritage Association. Today is the 18th of August, 2003. It's Monday. I'm speaking with Charlotte Falk, and if you could uh, start off by spelling your full name and the year of your birth. C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E, Caroline, C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E, Nordstrom, N-O-R-D-S-T-R-O-M, and F-A-L-K, I'm your evening. All right. Um, where were you born? Uh, the uh, farmhouse right out of Bishop Pilgrim Selman's there now. Oh, okay, so right, right nearby. Right on the edge of town. Right nearby. Okay. At home. Um, what would you say, when you can think back to the, your earliest times of when you were a child, going as far back as you can, what would you say would be the earliest memories that you have of this place and your, you know, right where you grew up there? Of course, I would be, being out on the edge of town, wasn't in town that much as a small child. I just remember growing up out there and the buildings out there and Going then maybe to school is probably when I remember, well I remember playing mm -hmm. under, a, under the trees and we had a swing and my brothers, I had five brothers and they had put a bag on the end of a rope and jumped off of a building and we didn't, my sister and I were too small, we didn't dare to do that. Mm -hmm. they, they would fly away high on that bag and that rope. So I sort of remember that, and then we played house under the grapevine because it was gave us some shade in the summer. That was when I was real little, uh -huh. and I had a brother, Franny, that was just a year or two older than I, and so he would play with two girls. The other boys were older, mm -hmm. so that's my earliest memories. Mm -hmm. And when I started school, there was a little lane that went uh, from our backyard up past where um, Krauses live now. Mm -hmm and up there, and then over to the corner, and then over to the brick schoolhouse. So that, we walked that. Oh, okay. We either walked or Dad would take us in the wagon or the horse and buggy. Mm -hmm. Or um, the boys, of course, older, would ride bicycles sometimes. Mm -hmm. So um, we went that way to school. Is that right? What, what was the year that you were born in your first day? Oh, yes. Um, October 10th, 1914. All right, and um, you mentioned horses. Uh, was that pretty much the mode of transportation? Yes. Um, I was telling somebody just the other day, I think I saw the very earliest in that we only had horses to start with. And then I remember my brothers, I don't know if they sent through this, through the Sears Roebuck or what, but they sent for a car, and it was called a brush. And they put it together, and all it was was wheels, and it didn't have rubber tires, really. It might have had a rim mm -hmm. and a motor. And they pulled around with that brush, and they get it going a little while, but it seemed like they were always having trouble with it. Yeah. I don't think it was so successful. Yeah. Oh, wow. But I remember that brush. And then we rode ponies a lot. We had mm -hmm. a pony. Was there a place for all these animals, and did everybody on their original their individual farms have the animals. Did they actually have stables? Oh yes, sort? we had stables. We had a lot of cars, cows, and we had pigs and chickens. So we had pretty much our own food and a big orchard. Wow. And I remember, oh, this was one of my early memories on that farm. My mother was up picking cherries in a cherry tree and the limb broke that the ladder was against and she was clinging onto a bough for a long time before I could get somebody to come and help him, I'm sure she'd fall, but she hung on. Really? Never wow. fell. That's something. But it scared us. Yeah. Um, then when I was telling about, I went from corpses mm -hmm. to the time when it was Old Settler's Day, just before Old Settler's Day, and somebody came and asked my dad, could they uh, land a plane on the uh, meadow? just beyond our house, because it was nice and level for on the pasture land. And he said, well, he suppose they could. And they said they'd give somebody a free ride in the house, but they were going to take people up for, I don't know how much, maybe only 50 cents a ride. It wasn't very much. Uh -huh. And so my dad was chicken. He wouldn't 
he went right, so my mom went up. Is that and right? then I remember as a little child how scared I was that she'd never get down. <laughs> it would crash. Well, what did this plane look like? Was it a... It was a biplane. It was a biplane, wow. Uh -huh. And there was a little old man here in town by the name of Cop Yon, uh -huh. and he always went around town saying that he knew the earth was flat. Uh -huh. Couldn't tell him any different. Flat as a pen. So they said, well, they'd send him up in the airplane and maybe they could convince him. So this uh, guy took him up and then he got down and he said, you still can't say it's wrong. He said, it's a flat as a pancake. <laughs> That's a wonderful story. That's neat. Um, and this was over by where you live over, yes, over there? Yes, out there at Summons. Just on the south Just side? Just down, no, no, on the west side of the, the house, by okay. my house yard. Wow. And then, of course, then I remember too, my dad coming home and saying, oh, the first car in Galva, Soderbergh in Galva Is had bought right? a car. Was he rich to be able yes. to buy such a yeah. car? Uh -huh. Wow. Mm -hmm. What kind, do you recall what kind of car it was? What the, the I don't car? remember for sure. Did you take it into Bishop Hill? Did you drive it all I think he'd just driven it in Galva at the time, but we heard about it. Really? So it was kind of interesting to think that yeah. I knew from the three stages. Oh boy, that is interesting. Speaking of transportation, um, what can you tell me about the railroad and, and what you remember from the earliest times of seeing that in this area? Of course, I remember the railroad uh, from the time I was little. Not that I ever went uh, on it. I don't remember ever riding on it. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember it being there. And I remember them saying that uh, this, uh, Pumper Nelson, they called him, mm -hmm. at the edge of town, right east of the cemetery, mm -hmm. Pumper lived, had been the uh, pumper for water on the river. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's neat. Um, you ever been down that way, down to see the tracks and all that? There? Yes, uh, this is uh, after we moved, though, from that farm, when I was about 10, 11 years old, we moved to my grandparent Erickson's farm out on the other side of town, northeast. And um, then we used to walk along the tracks and pick berries. And mm -hmm. You ever see trains go past there? The, the Earlier, bottom, bottom yeah. Trains, yeah. And we walked that track to school because for a couple of years then after we moved there, we went to the school out there. Oh, okay. Is that, where, where is that? And where was it, I should say? Well, you know where he's putting in the lake and the, and that log cabin? Oh, yeah. That's around Bob, in that. Bob Anderson, yeah. Vicinity. So we walked the railroad tracks to school mm -hmm. for a couple of years. What did you think of those trains when you first saw them? Did you think it was kind of a, I mean, what, what were your impressions of that? Did you oh, sort of I don't know. I, I didn't think we thought a whole lot about it. Mm -hmm. Just sort of there. Because they had been going while well, we lived here and they've been going through. So. Could you hear them throughout town? Oh, yeah. 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 They were blow, they have to blow their whistles? Yeah, they blew their whistles. Yeah. Um, what would you say would be probably some of your most pleasant memories of growing up here that you can recall? They were all pleasant. I, uh, I was thinking about it one day and we had a lot of very nice old stately gentlemen, I would say. Uh, because when we lived out here on the edge of town, uh, where you lived was uh, Leonard Erickson. And then the next place up was Jacob Jacobson, and he was a nice old fella. And then uh, uh, P.L. Johnson had a beautiful big home on the next block on the corner. Oh, and it burned down. Is that right? And they said it had a I never was in it, but people said it, it was a beautiful stairway. Really? Walnut stairway and a beautiful right. home, big square home, and it burned. And where, where was that located? Uh, you just, you know that the gray house next to you in that big lot on the next corner. Okay, wow. Um, Probably where the boss is. Oh, right over there? Okay, sure. The corner? Mm -hmm. um, can you remember any stories that your mom told you when you were little or your dad or your grandparents that, that go back some years that something that you they might have told you about the colony or things that they remember when they were younger. Well, I, I do because 
my grandpa, Andrew Nordstrom, was uh, just a, a young boy when they came, and uh, he was an ox boy. Oh, really? He took care of the oxen oh, yeah. down here uh -huh. in the colony. Anything you mentioned and, about that? And then uh, my great grandpa was the doctor. Oh, oh sure. Okay. So they tell about that and how he just trained himself by reading medical books on the way across. Is that right? <laughs> wow. Any unusual cases or things that he had to deal with? Well, the minute that it seemed like as soon as they got here, it was cholera. Yeah. And people died. How'd they, how they deal with that? They just barely, just. Really? Mm -hmm. they, anybody, and I guess the people were sick all over and they were just trying everything to yeah. give them to try to cure it. And I don't suppose grandpa knew that much well, you know, and they didn't have the antitoxins or anything. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of any relative or, or grandparent talk about the dugouts at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anything sort of strike you that you remember about the dugouts at all? They were in that bank down there, and mm -hmm. they had entranceways. How can you, I, it's hard to imagine how they would live in a dugout, but they had to that first winter. Yeah. And then get their water down there in the, they had water down there in the park. They had. Oh, really? They got it right there? In yeah, the there's a well there still, I think. Okay. Yes, there's a well. Wow. So they really, did, did they did they know what caused the cholera? Did they ever talk about what may have caused no. it? No. No. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, let's see, what's the highest grade of school that you went to? I went to grade school. Um, Mostly here, mm -hmm. but those two years out in the country. Uh -huh. And then I went to high school three years. Mm -hmm. And then it was, transportation was hard back and forth. Yeah. And my folks were getting very hard up on money. They had five boys and another girl. Uh -huh. And uh, so I said, I couldn't work, yeah. so I did. Uh -huh. where, where did you work? I worked taking care of babies after their mothers came home from the hospital for a few years. Oh, and then okay. I got a job at uh, Bon Mars in Davenport, taking care of two little children. Oh, Davenport. So you actually got up, you went up Yes, I, I was going with my future husband at the time, and he took me down there, and I stayed right in the home. So you stayed there for like a long time? Then. Uh, like for took, took care of the children until I got married. Okay. So it's not like people today where they commute from no. Davenport to <laughs> Well, of course, he come down there, so. Yeah. <laughs> so did, did you guys drive or did you take the Yeah, he had there? a car. Oh, OK. Wow. Um, what uh, color hair did you have as a girl? Oh, I think it was brownish. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so now, what year did you get married and, uh, and who did you get married to? 34. Donald Falk. OK. Charlie yeah. Falk was his grandpa. Okay, and where where would you where'd you get married at? At uh, the Bishopville Parsonage. Oh, okay. And Mrs. Falk ran and her husband. Okay, well, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, how many children have you got? Four. Four? Two boys and two girls. Any grandchildren? Well, <laughs> Too many to count? <laughs> Twelve, and as of today, I have 21 great grandchildren. Is that right? Holy cow. Just got a new one today. Wow. Well, that's neat. Congratulations. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have a best friend in grade school? Somebody that you sort of remember that oh, soulmate see. that you remember from way back when? Uh, I was going to say Olivia, but I think also um, Dorothea my Erickson minor. And what, what, what did you guys do, say, summer and winter to entertain yourselves? Like, what kind of games and things did you guys do to stay busy as kids? Well, of course, it, I was growing up, mostly I was on the farm. Mm -hmm. And so we kept busy, it seemed like. Yeah, We'd yeah. find our own recreation. Mm -hmm. You ever go? Uh, oh, yes, so we did have a pond, and that we had a lot of fun. And we had a creek, and I can remember. See, I was probably 10, 11 when we moved there, but I do remember my sister and I going down and trying to dam up the creek so that the water could 
Oh, really? <laughs> it was dirty, but we had fun. Yeah. And then we did have a lot of fun on the pond, and they, people from town would come out and skate in the winter. Mm. Do you remember anything that was happening in town here for some type of special events or uh, in Bishop Hill um, in the summertime or the wintertime or uh, earlier we, uh, Olivia was talking about, the, say, Woodman Hall, did you ever go there as a kid? Yes, now I was, my husband wasn't much to want to dance. I think I would have, but he didn't mm -hmm. like it. And so we didn't go to the dances, but he was in the Woodman Drill team and uh, they had all the regalia and everything. Oh, really? And, there, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. and I'm sorry to say I sold the axe and the uniform and the whole thing at one time. I should have kept it, but I didn't. Yeah. And um, so he went to that, and uh, they had lots of woodman programs, and they had a lot of uh, church, uh, school programs oh, down really? there. Oh, that's neat. And uh, I can remember our children being in the programs there for, we had a real good music teacher at the school mm -hmm. in those days. And probably you, somebody told about Verna Bowman Anderson. Her parents right, lived right out in the, the country, yeah. just out uh, south of town, a ways. Mm -hmm. And she was super. Mm -hmm. She could play the piano like. Really good. Oh, wonderful. And then she would teach music. So she taught mm -hmm. children to sing. And they really sang for her. Really? Yes, they did. Wow. Um, could you tell me what you remember of the big brick building and things like that? That building, did you ever go in there much? As yes, it was quite a quite a big building, and uh, we carried milk when I still lived out there for Selman's there. We carried milk in uh, Carol Carol syrup pails, mm -hmm. and uh, to several of the older people down there in the brick building. I don't know that we were ever invited in. Uh -huh. But they had the two steps went up uh -huh. one from each side to each place where you entered. I yeah. can remember that. Yeah. And uh, it was quite a building. And when it burned down, we lived out there mm -hmm. on a farm. Did you, did you see any they called it Nervo. Uh -huh. There were different names for some of the farm, colony farms. That was Nervo. Okay. And so well, uh, that's what we did. And then uh, the men. Heard, I guess they heard, no, the telephone. They rang on the telephone when it was an emergency. Uh -huh. Many, many times. You knew it was an emergency because they kept ringing, 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 ringing. It oh, didn't really? just ring short, long, short, like your call. Uh -huh. It was ring, 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 and you wondered what's going on. Really? And it, it was, was did fire. Did you instantly know that yeah. there, was, there was a problem then? Fire at the, yeah. so uh, my, it was bad weather. Mm -hmm. And so they knew they couldn't get the car. There was snow drifts and they had cold weather. Yeah. So my father and my brothers ran into town in the mm -hmm. cold weather and to see if they could help mm -hmm. with the fire. Really? And of course it was so cold that we didn't go. Yeah. So I remember my mother and uh, Lois and I looking out the window and seeing the flames. And it was scary. Was it bright? Bright. Yeah, yes. really? Bright. Wow. Lit up the sky. Was there so it was there was, was there snow on the ground or was oh, it? Oh yes, snow? it was cold. So it really must have it was cold. Light. Yeah. And they tell a story about one lady uh, that uh, threw her dishes out the window and tried to get her mattress down. Is that right? <laughs> wow. Un unbelievable. Have uh, you ever get a chance to go down in that basement down there or see the the uh, the eating area of the Big Brick? You ever get a chance to yeah. go down there? No. no. Like I said, I don't remember being invited in even to the houses where we delivered the milk. Uh -huh. um, okay, now I understand that uh, there were there was really no plumbing back then, right? So no. So you really had what? What did people use instead of that? Well, they had a slop jar, and then yeah. they called it the slop jar. The, yeah. Under the bed at night, and then in the daytime they had a one outside. They went to. Mm -hmm. And then what about bathing then? Safer. Big tubs. Big tubs. Oh, in our house it was so funny because I had five brothers. Uh -huh. So while we were still over there, my folks would heat the water, <laughs> and all the boys would take a bath in mm -hmm. 
in that, down the basement, mm -hmm. just below the kitchen. And then when they were through, then my sister and I, I guess we got fresh water, I don't know. <laughs> oh, hell, <laughs> Anyway, then, then it was our turn, so we got our bath. Yeah. So that's, and that was just a Saturday night. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Imagine how we smelled through the week. I was going to say, it's probably better on a warmer day, because uh, how, how did they heat that water? Did they have to boil it? On the stove, right above the, right above in the kitchen was the stove, and they heated it in big really? kettles on the stove. Now, were these, were these wooden stoves or these gas stoves? We used wood or coal. Really? And where'd you get, where'd you get all that from, say, the coal things? Did you coal it from the depot. Oh, you got it from the depot? Coal from the depot. Oh, okay. So they shipped that in? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, can you describe that depot offhand, or is there anything that looked? Yeah, I remember the whole red depot down there, and uh, it was red. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, uh, later on, uh, I remember the headstrom that worked there. He was the nice, mm -hmm. nice man. He finally married one of the Arquist girls that owned the Arquist store. Really. And he worked there a long time, many years. Really. Well, and what did he do then? What was his job? He was the Keeper at the uh -huh. depot. Wow. Um, what was your favorite store in town as a kid? I think our could probably. Boy, like we did go the to the post to office a lot, but that was more for like to get your mail or cards. You wanted to buy postcards or mm -hmm. I guess he did sell some other things, but I can't remember buying much there. Wow. But my dad was um, <clears throat> my dad was busy. Uh, in town as well as in the country, he had wore a lot of hats. Mm -hmm. He was a um, telephone company trader. Oh, is that right? Wow. And uh, he was on the board, the town board, uh -huh. and later supervisor. And I remember when he was supervisor, if somebody got a serious illness or disease that they had to be, um, what do they call it when they put placards up? Uh, Oh, like a memorial or No. Okay. Where you can't, nobody can come see you and you can't. Oh, quarantine. Yeah. Quarantine. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Right above the post office in the room above, mm -hmm. you go up those stairs. He had an office up there since he was supervisor, and they had to come up there for the placard to put on their house if they were quarantined. Nobody could come to the house. Boy. So was was that, that was the way they did things? That's then. the way so, they did things then when you had, yeah. were quarantined. And uh, how long could that be that a person could be quarantined? Then you were quarantined for all weeks. Really? Yeah. Wow. Depending on what disease you had. Measles even, whooping oh, cough, really? wow. scarlet fever. Is that right? So oh, all yeah. that went through. All that. But by, but no cholera probably at the time. No, I don't, that was I don't remember. I don't remember. Right? Okay. Only by hearing them. Yeah. Hearing about it, yeah. Um, do you ever remember seeing a, a mill around here now, by any chance? No, I heard about the mill. It was uh -huh. down there, but that mm -hmm. it was gone by the next week. Um, uh, did uh, you said you worked outside? You, you had a job, or what was that? Did you work outside? Just mostly take care of the children. Okay. Your favorite toys and games, do you have any special games that you guys like to play as kids more than I, I think, and I, I tell my grandchildren, uh, outside of dolls, uh, we used to use paper dolls a lot. Mm -hmm. And cut out, even if we just cut them out of the catalogs. Yeah. Play with paper dolls a lot. Oh, that's neat. When we were little. Yeah. And then I, we were, when we were bigger, and we'd ride bicycles or or play games like other kids. And I think being on the farm, you're always busy. Yeah. Would, uh, how many people would you say when you were a kid uh, were in Bishop Hill living? Uh, today we have 125. How many would you say probably were around when you were younger? Well, there were quite a few children uh -huh. in town. Yeah. More than today, or, le or less than today, or? Oh, I would think maybe even more. some families were big. Yeah. Let's see. Mm. 
Oh, um, the uh, Woodman Hall. It used to be, I understand, it used to be a uh, bakery and brewery building, but was there anything that you could see when you were younger that still made, that, that it even look like that anymore, that they could have been used? No, but you know, I hear, I remember hearing some stories about the fact that there was a tunnel from that Woodman mm -hmm. building over to P.L. Johnson's or over across oh, the right? road. Wow. But I never was confirmed. I, yeah. but that's the story I used to hear. Uh -huh. That there was a tunnel under it. Really? Uh, you mentioned P.L. Johnson's. Was that what kind of store was that? It was hardware store. Hardware. Okay. Uh huh. And uh, he, he knew where everything was. I can remember going in there with my dad, and then where they, uh, where the kitchen is, mm -hmm. on that wall, were just like slide out boxes almost all the way up as far as he could, and P.L. was a big man. Okay. Yeah. As far as he could reach, he could pull out a box and know what size screw or what size nail or anything. Yeah. My dad used to tell a story about the farmer that came in and wanted 10, 10 penny nails. Uh -huh. And uh, of course he came in with team and horses. Mm -hmm. Go all the way back out. And then P.L. told my dad the next day, he said, you know that he came back with those ten penny nails, and he said, I didn't need them because my son straightened some out. Oh, is that so right? He brought them back. So he brought them back. <laughs> That's amazing. Was it, did it look like a pretty nice store? Yeah, he way? had a nice store. Really? And he was quite a nice man. That's what I was saying a while ago. I think when I look back on Bishop Hill, it was a quiet, nice, peaceful town. I can't remember a lot of arguing and quarreling about things and how things were managed because P.L. was a distinguished man. Uh, E.L. Swanson at the post office was a nice guy. And uh, Jacob Jacobson. And we always had a nice minister, it seemed like, at the church. And uh, who am I forgetting? Uh, E.L. Yeah, I said E.L. Swanson. And probably Emory Chilbert had the but that was a little, a little later, maybe, mm -hmm. at the uh, drugstore where we could get ice cream. Oh, is that right? Wow. So, the, you ever been in the pharmacy? The pharmacy that there was, I understand there's a pharmacy here? Well, it was a drugstore. Oh, was that too? Okay. But mostly we went there for ice cream. Really? And where was that? <laughs> where is that located? And he made good malted milks, too. Did he? Really? And we got ice cream. Oh, that's one thing. And when school was out, at the last day of school, the teachers would always give us a little slip to go uptown to Emory's and have ice cream cone. And the ice cream cones in those days had a, a little slip in the bottom. Mm -hmm. So when you got the bottom, you look at the slip and it said a free one and you got a thing. Wow. Um, uh, was, uh, well, where was that located, that, that ice cream? That Across ice cream. from Marquis Store. Oh, okay. Is, is that building still there today? Well, the building is there, but there's nothing in it now, I don't think. Oh, okay. Is it, would that be the, is that the bell coming in? Is that the dark brown? Yeah, one? the dark. Okay. Wow. And w what else did they have there? I've seen one picture of it. Did they, so they had ice cream, and, and was there anything else you can get there in terms of? Well, he had a few other things, yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think, I remember mm -hmm. that he did, uh, when school was out, he would take books that were in pretty good shape, and the next fall, if people couldn't afford to buy new books, they could come in there and buy second-hand exactly. books. Wow. And he had them on a shelf in that, in Emory store, too. And that's what it's called, Emory store? Yeah, Emory yeah. store. Wow. Neat. Let's see. Um, did, do you recall anything like we've been through recently with this weather, that high winds or tornadoes or things like no, that? No, we had lots of electrical storms, but I don't remember any tornadoes. Nothing, nothing like My dad loved storms.